I'd like to call to attention our regular meeting of the East Point City Council on Tuesday, March 26th at 7 p.m. Please rise for the invocation given by Councilwoman Sarah Lacido. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear God, on behalf of all of those gathered here today, we ask for your continued blessing. We ask for your guidance as we work through our agenda. We ask that you continue to help us to understand each other as we work to find fair solutions to the issues that face our city. Thank you for your blessings and for your guidance. We look forward to a great spring in our city, and we ask that you keep our residents safe. In your name we pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So council, if you would join me, we have some awards to give tonight. Do we need a microphone moved? This is a very big night. Um, a few a month or so ago, we went to a fire chief's award dinner for the Southeast or the Macomb County Fire Chiefs Association. And it was our pleasure to witness three brave firefighters from our city and to hear about the work of dispatchers. And we wanted everybody in our city to know of the courageous work that these guys always do they'll tell you they're nothing different in an average day but when you hear their awards they did a great job we also wanted to pay attention to the dispatchers because no one ever pays attention to them so tonight um, our new deputy fire chief is going to tell you all about the awards thank you madam mayor I think before I get started, I'd like to introduce, for those of you that don't know, the Director of Public Safety, George Rohib, and our Director of our Dispatch Center, Sarisa uh, Sher uh, Sherry Bertram. I'd also like to call up the, uh, the recipients at this time. That'd be Lieutenant Mike Ewalt, uh, Senior Firefighter Joe Zangara, Firefighter Mike Snezniak, and a couple of our Sarisa dispatchers, uh, dispatcher John Jones. Of course, everybody had to sit in the back, so it's a long walk. Um, and dispatcher Caitlin Trackwell. We do have an additional dispatcher that couldn't make it tonight. Her name is Catherine Schmelzer. I got a little bit to read, uh, and, and then we'll go ahead and hand out the awards. Um, I've already introduced you to the firefighters. As a recap, at the Macomb County Chiefs Dinner on March the 1st, the three firefighters were awarded the Firefighter Medal of Valor for their actions at an early morning house fire last September on Nevada Street here in East Point. These three firefighters quickly and effectively initiated a search for three trapped family members in a well-involved house fire. In roughly about six minutes time, and with the support of other firefighters, which included firefighters from our neighbors, St. Clair Shores and Roseville. They searched through smoke, heat, and poor visibility to find and remove three victims. It was through these actions that these three firefighters were recognized with the highest honor in the fire department, which is the Firefighter Medal of Valor. Additionally, it's important to recognize the fine work of our 911 operators at our Sarisa Regional Dispatch Center. Dispatchers have a challenging job. This evening, along with our firefighters here tonight, we'd like to recognize dispatchers Caitlin Trackwell, John Jones, and Catherine Schmelzer. Together as a team, these dispatchers took various 911 calls and facilitated the dispatch information to the emergency crews on that September morning. The initial calls to our 911 center, as we can all imagine, challenging to process. And this Sarisa team did an outstanding job of obtaining an address location and providing the responding crews with useful dispatch information. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please help me congratulate our recipients of these awards. In addition, the three firefighters also have an award coming from the county. Um, they're just going to drop them on the floor, so I'm, I'm not going to hand them to them because they're big and heavy. They're beautiful. So I'm going to leave them on the table. They're going to take them when they go. Uh, we'll get a picture of them so we can send them to uh, the county. But thank you very much. This is award night and it's well we have one more that's being given to the city. Um, this was another exciting time. Um, so Carrie Sutton is with the Michigan Concrete Association and Steve Pangori with AEW. Do you want to come up as well? And then Dr. McLeod, do you also want to come up please? Because this award also mentions the schools. Good evening, my name is Carrie Sutton. I'm the Director of Engineering for the Michigan Concrete Association. As was mentioned, um, the, the city received an award for a project that was completed last year. So each year the Michigan Concrete Association at our awards luncheon uh, recognizes projects across the state of Michigan. So last year in 2018, the projects, there were over 60 projects submitted across the state. And the city of East Point won one of those projects, the Topher Road, Boulder Avenue to David Avenue project. And it received the award in the category of collectors. Anderson Eckstein and Westrick was recognized as the engineer for the project. So I think Steve Pangori is here, back there, uh, representing the engineer and the owner, obviously the city of East Point. The concrete contractor was Florence Cement Company. So the award was received in this category recognized for pavement quality and workmanship as well as the efforts by the contractor to accommodate the residents and local community, especially the school during the construction, which led to an on-time completion despite various project challenges. So working in a community, working in neighborhoods is always a great challenge for a contractor, but with the coordination of the city, the engineer and the contractor, the project was recognized for its quality. I'd also like to recognize um, the city has received several awards from the Concrete Paving Association over the, uh, over the years. So it's kind of a, a testament to the, to the investment in the infra infrastructure that the city does uh, commit to. So I, I commend the city for that. And um, is anybody from the city want to come up? We would like to, I'd like to hand the 
Right behind me, everybody's here, okay. So uh, to the mayor, the award of excellence to the city of East Point for the Topher Road uh, construction project from 2018. So Thank congratulations. You. Thank you, currently right now so they're really criticizing it's very significant that it's just six minutes in a very short period of time. We have to be really proud of it. So thank you all for coming. Please call the roll. Council Member DeMonico. Here. Council Member Lucido. Here. Council Member Kleinfeld. Here. Council Member Owens. Here. Mayor Pixley. Here. Um, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the agenda as submitted, please. So moved. Support. Support. Mayor. Oh. Moving support. Madam Mayor. <laughs> um, you're going to lengthen. I hope I, well, under, I hope shorten one, right? It, it is, Madam Mayor. Under. Uh, um, Item 12A, Attorney Client Privilege Communication Pending Litigation, DOJ. I do not have any additional information to add uh, from last me uh, meeting, only because we have not received an opinion from the federal judge uh, regarding the city's motion for summary uh, judgment yet. A motion right. with that change. Sir. All right, so you want a motion to approve the agenda with that change? Support. 12 8. Support, move and support. Please call the roll. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. And with that, we will proceed to the first hearing of the public. Does anyone wish to be heard? Anyone wish to be heard at this time? Sir? <coughs> Good evening, Mayor Pixley, council members, members of the community. My name is Gary Sasek. I reside at 23796 Roxana Avenue here in East Point. I'm also the chairperson of the East Point Parks Commission. And um, I'm here tonight to just bring you up to speed a little bit on what the commission has been doing. We've met with representatives of the East Detroit Tiger Cats. We've also met, met with representatives from the East Point School District. Um, discussing what the needs and wants for the memorial field building concession stand and area is involving. And uh, what we've been able to determine through three visits of the property 
is that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. It's work that has been allowed to slide over the years, and we know we're not going to be able to correct this overnight, but we have an opportunity to be moving forward to make that building and the area that it's servicing much more pleasant to be at in regards to the use of the football teams, um, the Tiger Cats, and other community events that go on there. So at this time, um, we just would like you to know that a lot of effort has gone into the recommendations that are coming before you, and uh, we just know that it is something that needs to be done. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, and thank you for all your work. Does anyone else wish to be heard at this time? Anyone else? Mr. Curley. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Harvey Curley, City of East Point. Um, I would just draw your attention to um, item M, the uh, Memorial Park concession stand locker room building recommendation. Um, I think we would all agree that when someone from our city or the visiting cities that are here to, comes up to the concession stands, not only do they expect good food, which they get, but also uh, a place that they can look at and uh, uh, know that we care about uh, our folks. Uh, even more importantly, however, is the locker rooms. When we get the visiting teams that come in here, we not only want them to uh, be able to change into their uniforms, but in a comfortable style, too. So um, I would just ask that uh, you would, uh, after your discussion, that you would give your support and approval to the renovation of the concession stand and the locker rooms. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Does anyone else wish to be heard? Ma'am? Good evening, Council. My name is Ernestine Lyons. I live in Harper Woods, Michigan, and I am here today to speak to you and the community here in the city of East Point about an, a community event that the city of Harper Woods would like to invite all citizens to attend. Uh, it's called the Harper Woods Soup, and it is a microfinancing community dinner. And what it does is it helps local entrepreneurs in the East Point, Gross Point Shores, and Harper Woods area to sort of get funding for uh, creative projects and then also entrepreneurial pursuits. And then it's also a great way to get to know people in your community. And so I'd like to invite everyone here to attend this event. And um, so it's gonna be a soup, salad, bread, all sorts of great you know, food. And how it works is you know, people submit proposals for ideas and then uh, you know, those ideas are gonna be voted upon. And whoever gets the most votes at the end of the night after dinner is eaten and you've made new friends gets all of the proceeds that are raised that night. It's actually based on the model of Detroit Soup, and uh, we in Harper Woods decided that it would be a great idea to open up to the communities in this area here. And so I would love to invite everyone here, and I'll um, distribute flyers for members of the council. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to be heard from the Tiger Cats? Thank you, Mayor Council. My name is Mike Roth. I'm a 57-year resident of East Point. Um, I'm also an associate of the East Detroit Tiger Cats. I used to play Tiger Cats. My son played Tiger Cats. Another gentleman here played Tiger Cats. Um, I have the school here with us. They're also teachers at the school. Um, we just want you to take your, think about the consideration of small steps and fixing that field up because it really needs it. And then also once the field starts to get fixed up, there's more revenue that can be made there. Um, so we just would appreciate you guys taking the time to think about it. And thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Reverend Lancaster. <laughs> Madam Mayor and to the City Council. My name is Kevin Lancaster. I am the senior pastor of Love Life Family Christian Center right here in East Point. And I just wanted to stand and say thank you for the consideration today as we're on for B under new business uh, for the special land use. Um, we've done our best to do the city proud. We do believe we are a community church. 
and the addition is just for that so we can serve the community even more and to make a difference. So again, we just wanted to stand and say thank you. The church is here with us and that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Anyone else wish to be heard? Anyone else? Karen. Good evening, Karen Moragin, East Point resident. Um, so a couple of topics uh, to cover and tie into one another. Um, first and foremost, um, Easter's coming up, and even though we have the humane pet ordinance, um, there are still unscrupulous commercial breeders out there and backyard breeders. And I can't stress enough how important it is that people do not give in to impulse buys in purchasing bunnies, chicks, and ducks. If you don't know what you're doing, you're doing those animals no favor. You're doing a great disservice to them. And the shelter that I work with, I guarantee you, July this year, we're gonna see a huge influx of what are called Easter bunny dumps. Because when the bunnies get to be about six month age, people don't wanna be bothered. They complain, they're too messy, they're too destructive, kids are tired of them, they outgrew their cuteness. Whether it's a bunny, a chick, a dog, cat, a dog, whatever, whatever animal you take into your life, you make sure you're gonna commit to that animal for its entire life. No ifs, no ands, no buts. No excuses that you have to move and you can't take them with you that you're allergic, you should have thought about that before you got them, you know, that you don't have the time. There are those, you know, Madam Mayor, I appreciate the fact that you shared at the last meeting that you no longer have animals because you don't have the time to commit to them. That is an incredibly smart move. That is to be commended. People who understand that they don't have the time or the resources to commit that's a very smart and wise decision not to have them. Because you know what? They possess the same intelligence as toddlers. And toddlers, humans, are completely dependent upon us. And so are these animals. And as they grow older, they're still like toddlers for life. We owe them a duty to protect them. You have 30 and we have failed them miserably and especially what's going on in these petting zoos, I'm gonna keep on you until you ban these petting zoos. I've warned you repeatedly of all the neglect and the transmission of zoonotic diseases, and it's gotta stop. And I will end with this. I had the opportunity to speak when Beto O'Rourke was in Centerline last week, and that man listened to every word I had to say in front of well over 200 people in my time in addressing what's going on with the animal cruelty and how we stop that. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Mr. Truesdale. Good evening, Madam Mayor, uh, esteemed members of council, city officials, Alex Truesdale, city of East Point. I'm representing tonight, uh, the Knights of Leo the 13th, council 3042 from East Point. And uh, thank you very much for uh, getting the, uh, on the agenda for tonight, the reading of the first reading of the uh, changing, hopefully changing of the ordinance, uh, the city ordinance to allow charitable organizations such as the Knights of Columbus to solicit on the street corners. Um, as you know, the Knights of Columbus have been a partner with the city of East Point for many years. Uh, we've helped out in whenever we can, especially with the Memorial Day Parade. And this is a national mandate from Supreme to help uh, mentally impaired adults and children. And we do this every Palm Sunday weekend. So I see this as the reading, the first reading. I hope that the second reading will be on the first Tuesday of the month. Um, so if it does pass and we are allowed to solicit on street corners as of uh, House, House Bill 4888 allows us to do so, that uh, we'll have it in time uh, to marshal our forces to hand out Tootsie Rolls uh, for donations on the street corners of East Point. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. In the back, Mr. Creech, is that your hand? Madam Mayor, Council, and residents, Tate, it's great, great to see this many people from our city. Uh, you know, no matter what it comes down to, we all have to work together. I know I sometimes fight, and I sometimes gravel, and there's a lot of things that I want to see the city do. The only way we can do them is we all have to do them. One person, this council, the mayor, they can't, they can't do it. It's going to take us, the residents, in order to do it all. We have the parks. Our, our parks have taken a beating in the last 10 years. I mean a serious beating. If you look at them, they're worn out. We're going to have to come back and do some serious work on them. And I know we don't have the money right now. <clears throat> with, a, with a little bit of help from the residents, from the council, from the mayor, and from our new manager, we can put this city back together. It, it's hard. I mean, we've lent it. Now, I can't, I can't, I want to use the word deteriorate, but it's run down. But without the financial respect that we, we should have given the city, we haven't had the finances. So we're going to have to do it maybe the back door away. We're going to have to get out and do some of the work ourselves. I'm looking forward to working in the parks. I've got the shuffleboards coming back up. I've got other things coming back up. I'd like to see this, the residents and to come back in the city and enjoy it again. When I was a youngster, I spent more time at the parks than I did at home. I want, I want to see everybody enjoy our schools, enjoy our parks, enjoy this city. We can make it what it once was. And I'm glad to see the council right now, as I said before, too. Let, let's do everything we can possibly do to make this city respectful, come back, and let's all fight hard for it, and we can do this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Creech. Anyone else wish to be heard? Anyone? Seeing none, the first hearing of the public is closed. Let's move on to approval of the minutes and the first meeting to be approved is the regular meeting of March 5th. Can we get a motion, please? Sure, Madam Mayor, I'll motion to approve the regular meeting minutes March 5th, 2019. Support. Move to support. Please call the roll. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Next item is the show cause meeting from February the 19th, 2019. Can we get a motion to that? Sure. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to approve the show cause meeting minutes from February 19, 2019. Support. Move and support. Please call the roll. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. The other two items are the closed session minutes from the collective bargaining strategy on March the 5th, 2019. Can we get a motion to that? Sure. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to approve the closed session meeting minutes of for collective bargaining strategy pursuant to MCL 15.268C on March 5, 2019. Support. Who is supported? Please call the roll. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. And our last item is the closed session minutes from the attorney client privilege communication pending litigation. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to approve the closed session meeting minutes of attorney client privilege communication uh, pending litigation. Well, that was also from on March same 5th. day, right? Yes, March 5th, 2019. Support. Move to support. Please call the roll. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Our first item under um, we have scheduled hearings is for the Board of Special Assessors meeting in the public hearing related to the sidewalk and driveway approach um, for the district number 181. Mr. Sabota, did you want to talk about that? Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, if I could have the gavel for this, please. Thank you. At 731, we will call to order the meeting of the Board of Special Assessors. Uh, if we could have a roll call, Mr. Secretary. Board Member Blum? Present. Chair Member Sabota? Present. Board Member Edwards? Present. We do have a quorum. 
this is in regards to a special assessment district number 181 for sidewalk and driveway approaches. Uh, Mr. Blum, would you be kind enough to explain the history of how we got to this point and where we're going today, especially in regards to the notices that were given to the affected individuals? Um, yes. So every um, fall, an area of the city is designated for sidewalk uh, repairs. Notices are sent out to the all homes in that area that they could be assessed um, sidewalk work. The following spring, the sidewalks are marked and the concrete is, well, they're given 30 days to do their own replacement. If they don't, the city replaces the concrete and bills the individual homeowner. Um, if the bill is paid, we're done. If the bill is not paid, which is the case tonight, uh, then we take the unpaid bills and turn them into a special assessment. Uh, and if those are then not paid, uh, they will be rolled onto the taxes. Uh, so this evening, the special roll that is being created are all sidewalk billings that have been left unpaid as of this point. All property owners have been noticed by certified mail of tonight's hearing in addition. So the purpose of this board meeting today is to receive public comment from those individuals who may be affected by the uh, special assessment. Are there any members in the audience at this time uh, who wish to make public comment on the proposed assessment? Uh, if so, please raise your hand. Please step forward to the microphone. And if you could please state your name and your address. Excuse me, could you please speak into the microphone, maybe lower it or get it a little closer? Thank you. My name is Sherry Langloy. I live at 24621 Dwight. I had one piece of concrete replaced last summer. It was a reasonable cost. I don't really think it needed it, but they did it. The problem I have is someone is chopping up the cement, not just the sidewalks, but the street. I don't drive anymore, so I'm looking at the cement so I don't trip over anything. There's round holes everywhere. It's like if you had a hiking stick. You would take a step and chop, take a step and chop. A lot of times they chop in the crack between two parcels. So it screws up both of them. Now you need to replace two. This has been going on for a year and a half. I really didn't know how to tell, who to tell. I didn't plan on coming here tonight, but this is not right. If there's a little hairline crack, they come and gouge it out and make it bigger. Now all of a sudden we're gonna need the streets replaced. And who's gonna pay for it? The residents. Like, oh, we have a problem, but it was created by the city workers. Somebody's gotta look into this before I pay one penny for cement. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to be heard at this public hearing? Going once, going twice, public hearing is now closed. Okay, the floor is now open for a motion to recommend that the City Council uh, assess the special assessments on the properties that have been appropriately noticed. Is there a motion to that effect? Actually, I want to talk about it some more. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll keep the public hearing open. Council member. Okay. <laughs> well, um, like the resident was saying, like how much is a, so the bills are different. Every every sidewalk is different. It can be like two to $3,000 or something like that. How much is we, max that a person can be charged? It depends with? on how many square feet are replaced. Okay. Um, in fact, tonight on the agenda will be the concrete bid for the next round of sidewalk work. We bill the homeowner based on a uh, square foot of concrete and depending on whether it's four, six, or eight inch concrete based on the pricing that the contractor gives us. We add on an administrative fee for the cost of uh, staff with all of the notices and billings and collections and all that. Um, so it really depends on the mm -hmm the status of the individual property's sidewalk at the time the uh, the area has gone through. And they pay 100% of the bill? Yes. The city doesn't pay anything? Correct. So I know some cities pay 
um, half, and they had the resident pay half. And then it's also some counties are researched that county has the fund that helps cities, some type of program helps cities pay for concrete for the resident. It's a five-year program, and the resident pays the county back um, with over five years. I don't think um, Macomb County has that. Do you know, Mike? I've never heard of that. Macomb County does have a home improvement program that is a zero interest five year loan on home improvements. Um, but there's a minimum and most of our sidewalk work is below the minimum that the county will authorize. Okay. Um, if the city paid for any of the sidewalk work, it would come out of our street funds. That's the only place that we could take it out of. Well, CDBG should be able to pay for it as well. Can we use CDBG funds to help offset some of the costs for the resident? It's right. not a qualified expense. Okay, I so, thought I saw something like that. I'm Mr. Sorry. Blum, can you give just a roughly um, one square, as I recall, is approximately how much? I cannot answer that off mm -hmm. the top of my head. But I, I, I do know that they measure, um, we went through this a few years back, that they look for holes in the cement um, that are a, a quarter size or more, or where you can see the gravel from the cement protruding. Right. Um, uh, if there's any differential, if the sidewalks have separated um, and there's more than a two inch gap, it must be replaced. Uh, in fact, we're liable if somebody trips and it's more than two inches. Um, and, and then if it's cracked, um, if it is caused by a city tree in the right of way, we do pay for that. Mm -hmm. um, but sidewalk or sidewalks and driveway approaches are all part of the, uh, the program. Well, even if we pay took the money out the local fund to pay for the sidewalks, we get money from the county for our local streets. So can we offset? So it's like, we, you know, the money that the county gives us for the streets, we can use that. It's still using the money for some type of percentage for the resident paying for their sidewalk, right? Because we get money from the county well, for we our get local money. It's from the state of Michigan for yeah. street funds, yes. Right. But it would cut into any funds that we, I mean, you, you've heard the numbers of how much street repair we need, um, and anything that we take out of street money to put into sidewalks is just that much less for streets. The only concern that I would have uh, for something like that is we are in our second from last year of this current cycle of sidewalk repairs, so everyone who was in the cycle prior to this year and next year would have had to pay 100%, and then potentially we would be offsetting the cost for just a small portion of the city. Um, because the cycle is not yet completed. So maybe a suggestion like that could be considered not for the 2020 role, but, uh, right, 2020, but for the 2021 program when we start the cycle once again. But in the past we have, um, as a council, stipulated that notice was sent out to each and every resident that's in the assessing square to say that um, sidewalks would be repaired the following spring. Correct. And those notices are out and received, and people have the opportunity to review their sidewalks at that time and to replace any before the inspector comes out. Correct. Again. Yep. Yeah, I was just trying to find a way to help the resident pay for that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like some of that portion should be on the city to help pay offset some of those costs. And if we use CDBG funds from our local streets that we have every year, we can help do that. Maybe we can find some way to pay a percentage, even if we start off with 10% or something, depending on. Well, that would be a council decision. Okay. Well, council, that might be something that we might want to look into. I, I'm wondering whether it would qualify <coughs> with a CDBG. For funds. CDBG, no. Okay. Uh, Act 51 non-motorized, yes. Okay. But Act 51 funds are less and less every year. Well, actually, they're going up now. Barely. Uh, however, when you consider the costs of concrete and blacktop, it covers less, so that is a true statement then. Uh, any other public comment before we officially close the public hearing? Going once, going twice, now we are closed. Now, uh, for the uh, board members, is there a motion to recommend that the City Council uh, spread the sidewalk and driveway special assessment roll number 181 in the amount of $148,991.48 as recommended? It's under new business. Well, right, but we have to refer this to City Council. I'll make a motion. Uh, that is made by Member Edwards. Is there a second? I second. 
Second that. Mr. Blum, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the motion is approved unanimously. And being there are no other business on the agenda for the Board of Special Assessors meeting, is there a motion to um, recess and refer to City Council? I'll make a motion. Mr. Edwards, is there a second? I second that. Uh, that would be Mr. Blum. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meeting is adjourned at 743. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Meeting is the Council's again. Move on to unfinished business, please. And the first item under unfinished business is a second reading in the adoption of ordinance number 1164, which is to amend chapter 40, article 6, moderate income family housing tax exemption for air and park residences and municipal services. Can we get a motion to that effect? Madam Mayor, I motion to give second reading to adopt ordinance number 1164, which would establish a moderate income family dwelling project and municipal services agreement for the property located at 15115 Deerfield, tax ID number 14-30-301-031. Support. Move and support. Please call the roll. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, move on to reports from administration, and we'll start with our city manager, Mr. Sabota. Madam Mayor, this is a good news Tuesday, uh, not only from the way that we started the meeting, but from what I plan on reporting to your honorable body this evening. Uh, first, I would like to announce that after I don't know how many years, the city will have a new DPW director beginning on April 1st. Mr. Joe's Abraham is the retired deputy DPW director from the city of Detroit. He brings to the city a wealth of experience and knowledge, especially in obtaining grants for road repairs. So we look forward to bringing him on board, and he will be starting on Monday, April the 1st. Uh, another bit of good news. Uh, the budget for the uh, fiscal year uh, 1920, uh, I anticipate having that 250-page document uh, available online Friday, which I think is three or four days earlier than we were last year. Uh, I don't want to preview too much other than to say at this time, the general fund budget is being proposed, is structurally balanced for fiscal year 2019 and fiscal, uh, fiscal year 2019-20, and I anticipate it being structurally balanced for fiscal year 20 and 21. So this is good news in terms of the city's finances. More good news. Uh, remember a couple months ago, uh, I had uh, recommended uh, that city council authorize going out for bid for uh, road repairs and the area, it was called area one and area two, which was essentially south of Topher and west of Kelly. And we decided to increase the area because if we were able to get the estimated cost of construction to over a million dollars, we thought that we would get a very good bid rate. Well, we did not get a very good bid rate. We received an excellent bid rate. And as a result of the bid, uh, I will be recommending later in this meeting that we not only do Area 1 and Area 2, but also a portion of Area 3. So if you live south of Topher and East Point and you have a problem with your street that has a PASER rating of 4 or 5, uh, most likely you will have that road repaired sometime this year, assuming the bid is awarded at the meeting today. So more good news, especially for the south side residents here in East Point. Uh, let's stay on this good news. And I'm building everything up here, so stay with me on this. We received our water rates from the Great Lakes Water Authority f starting July the 1st. And if you recall, a couple meetings ago, I had indicated that Detroit, or not Detroit, GWLA, was planning on increasing our fixed monthly charge from $76,400 a month to $79,800 a month and raising our uh, commodity charge, which is our uh, rate per cubic foot, uh, from uh, meter cubic foot from $5.38 to $5.87. Now you might be wondering, what in the world is a water rate increase good news for? Well, Great Lakes Water Authority has finalized those numbers, 
and instead of a monthly charge of being $79,800, it is only going to be $79,400. So not as bad as we expected. And also that commodity charge at 587 is only going to be 584. So good news. Our water rate increase isn't as high as we thought it would be. So that's good news. Uh, in regards to the uh, cell tower uh, contract uh, lease extension that council did not want to consider at the last meeting because you didn't want to extend for another 30 years at an additional rate of $25,000. Well, the company couldn't understand exactly why council would not consider that, so they have offered to lower the extension from 30 years to 25 years, which essentially is $1,000 an additional year. Now I'll let council contemplate that, but I don't think that that decrease in rental term is going to be accepted, but they're starting to move in the right direction, so that's good news for the city. Uh, we have a beautification commission that does a great job in uh, promoting uh, the city, keeping th uh, properties uh, uh, beautiful, and that commission will be meeting on Thursday at 7 o'clock, uh, so if you're interested, uh, please come on down. Uh, Civil Service Commission, uh, they will be postponing their meeting one week. It was scheduled to be Monday, April 1st. It will now be Monday, April the 8th. And finally, uh, we are almost at the point where all of our board required boards and commissions uh, will be uh, seated with quorums. And later this evening, our Construction Code Board of Appeals, uh, we have some uh, recommendations for appointments, so that board will now uh, be official in terms of having a quorum. So this is a good news Tuesday, and hoping things continue throughout the rest of the meeting. And if Council has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Anyone? I'm good. Nope. <laughs> I like terrific Tuesday. Thank you. I was looking for that alliteration. I couldn't figure it out. So thank you, Council Member. Appreciate that. This is a terrific Tuesday. Let's move on to our finance director, Mr. Bloom. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, I have nothing specific to report. Uh, focus has been on budget and budget documents to get ready to get you a budget. So uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and shoot. But uh, I have nothing specific. Do you have any expectations of when in April we're going to be reviewing the budget? Uh, actually, Madam Mayor, uh, we discussed that in the office before the meeting. Uh, the budget will be transmitted probably via an e uh, link to the website on Friday. Uh, it will be officially presented to City Council per ordinance at the first meeting in April, which is Tuesday. And I will be recommending a resolution at that time uh, to give Council essentially about 30 days. Uh, and since we have three, excuse me, five Tuesdays in April, that the last Tuesday of April, which I want to say is the 30th, and then Wednesday, May the 1st, would be the two days that council would set aside. So that gives your honorable body 30 days to review, and then that gives us 30 days to uh, modify the document so that it can be presented for adoption at the first uh, council meeting in June, and the date escapes me at this time. So council has 30 days to review, administration has 30 days to prepare, and I thought that was sort of a fine median, especially since we have five Tuesdays in April. So unless there's objections, we can... Will we get a printed copy? A printed copy should be available at the council meeting on Tuesday. In what form is the budget going to be? It will be in the exact same format, and believe it or not, I think it'll be the exact same number of pages because we don't want to repaginate as the prior year's budget. And uh, I will say the budget resolution, I've heard council's concerns about uh, amendment authority, so I've got a, a little tweak that I will be proposing that will be explained in the budget document with the transmittal. So I've heard council, and I have an idea that I think is going to work for everyone on that. What's the status of the rate study, water rate study? Now, since we have a proposed budget, we will be able to give that information to our engineering firm. They will be able to drop those numbers into the formula. And I don't want to speak for Mr. Pangori. I know he was here. But I'm assuming that uh, once we give him that information, his firm will be able to turn that around reasonably quickly. And remember, we're getting two numbers. One is for the current fiscal year to see if the rate that we established for this year is adequate. And number two would be the rate for the uh, 
uh, ensuing fiscal year. Even more important to that rate study was this information that we just received, uh, thanks to Mr. Marucci for forwarding this to me, that we just received today regarding the uh, rate set by Great Lakes Water Authority. So we have all the information really that we need to provide an accurate rate recommendation through the rate study. Is, is Kyle, Mr. Seidel still working on the one from last year? Well, the, the current fiscal year. He's going to propose or present what the rates should have been for this fiscal year and then the uh, proposed rates for fiscal year 20. Okay. And I believe he's actually going to do a five-year projection. And did we, did we get notice from him on the sewer rates? No, we have not seen that and yet. We've not seen anything from the county yet related to Chapter 20? Uh, I do have that. Okay. Yeah, that's already in the budget. We, Does that we, include the proposed budget for the bond issue? They are not projecting any bond payments until 2021. Great. Okay. And we'd be able to see if we decreased or increased infrastructure spending. We can kind of see how the rate changes too then, right, I'd assume? Uh, well, it is a spreadsheet with formulas. So uh, obviously we will be presenting a rate study based on the proposed budget. And then in the event during budget deliberations, council determines that we do not want to invest money in infrastructure, uh, then that can be extrapolated and they'll just need to rerun a spreadsheet. Why would we do well, that? Uh, council be provided that spreadsheet? Yes, that, okay. that's the uh, rate study. Perfect. I, th uh, I think sewer rate increases 1.3%. Right, you, you had given me that percentage and I had factored that into the budget, but I have not gotten anything formal. We have a meeting tomorrow, so you should get it out of that. Okay. When we get a copy of the budget, can you also um, share with us the line item budget as well? In terms of the, uh, budget. excuse me, the detailed information that supported all of the numbers? Yes. Okay, that will be a very thick report. Uh, however, that can be provided. Thank you. All right, <laughs> Mr. Albrecht. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, last Tuesday, I had the uh, privilege of attending the Michigan Association of, of Municipal Attorneys event in Lansing. Uh, it is the uh, offshoot of the MML event that I believe some of the council members uh, also attended. I know I saw council member uh, uh, DeMonico there. Uh, Three it, was, of us. it was a good event, a lot of appropriate topics. Uh, uh, there was discussion on medical and mar uh, recreational marijuana, along with changes to the state's uh, fireworks uh, regulations uh, that were recently passed. Uh, it was also a great uh, networking event. In fact, I ran into uh, George Elworth from oh. the uh, uh, Attorney General's office and had a great conversation with him, spoke to him for about a half hour. And uh, we discussed um, the Charter Commission, um, a question that has been discussed here uh, previously at council meetings and also with regard to that 60-day requirement of having a commission selected after the decision has been made to um, uh, go out for a Charter Commission. As the council is aware, it's a two-step process. Uh, first, there's the question of having a general charter revision and then, of course, the selection of the uh, charter members. That can be done in one election or it can be done in two, but there's that question of whether it has to be done within 60 days after the first question is done. Uh, Mr. Elworth uh, admitted that is a very, very tight time frame, and it really is unrealistic. Um, uh, the city of Detroit uh, last year had the first question at their primary, and 90 days later had the question of who should be elected. Um, at their uh, general election in November. So in that case, the 60-day time frame wasn't adhered to. It doesn't appear as if it really is adhered to, and it can be done at a special uh, meeting as well. So uh, that was good to speak to him. He also gave me the uh, name for uh, Kim Sokola, who is a re research specialist with the MML, and she uh, told me that she has a whole library of handbooks for charter commissioners and all sorts of resources that mm. she would be happy to then uh, forward to me. So overall, it was a great event. Okay, anything else? I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs> Thank you. You have great news too. All right, let's move on to new business. Our first item is the adoption of resolution number, special assessment resolution number one blank for the sidewalk and driveway approach for district number 181. Do we have a motion, please? Madam Mayor, I motion to adopt resolution blank <laughs> approving sidewalk and driveway approach special assessment rule number 181. That would be spe special assessment resolution one would be the uh, 
Re proper reference. Yeah, it's just not on it. Okay. Uh, support. Move to support. Please call the roll. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. I have to tell you this, my street is on this list and I never got a letter. Take it up with the post office. <laughs> <laughs> they were mailed out, I can assure you of that. <laughs> I can't wait to see that person go around with the thing dinging holes in the cracks <laughs> on the sidewalk. All right, uh, the second item is a special land use approval for the expansion of Love Life Church. Madam Mayor, I motion to accept the Planning Commission's recommendation to approve the special land use for the expansion of Love Life Church located at 17363 Topher, contingent with compliance approval of site plan as presented by the city planner in site plan, and the parking lot is to be resurfaced. Support. Move to support. Were you going to say something? I think I, he was looking as to who the second was. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. And you all sit out there with bated breath. I see you all. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone on. You've been waiting now for what, two years for this, right? <coughs> First time I saw these plans was two years ago. All right, please call the roll. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Yay! Congratulations. Well planned, thought out. Very good. All right. Commission appointments. The first one is to the Construction Board of Appeals. Do we have a motion, please? Um, Council, I wanted to tell you that I did have a question about this, and you might have the same question. Um, this is for the Construction Board of Appeals, and we've done this before. We filled the board. They never have a meeting. So I was asking Mary Van Heeren, why do we keep filling it if we never have a meeting? And she said, thank God we don't have any meetings, but you still have to fill it. My other question was, did they have to be a resident? Because that's always the problem is you can't always find an architect and a builder and everybody else that lives here. And she said, no. So. Um, these appointments here are recommended. So I'd entertain a motion to appoint those people. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to reappoint to the Construction Board of Appeals Jim Colville with a term expiring Jan 1, 2021, and to appoint to the Construction Board of Appeals Mark Tarikian with a term expiring January 1, 2022, uh, Thomas E. Miller, term expiring January 1, 2023, and Rick Brancato with the term expiring January 1, 2024. Are any of those people here? Support. Move to support. Any of them here? Support. All right. Please call the roll. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. The next item is the appointment to the DDA. This is an appointment by the mayor with the approval of the council. Um, as you know, Teresa um, West is leaving. Um, she's retiring from First State Bank and after 40 years in East Point and much involvement within the community, including on the DDA, she is leaving sadly. So her um, appointment, I mean her replacement as manager of First State Bank is Chantel and she was pretty excited about being appointed to the DDA um, with a term to expire September the 1st, 2022. So I would appreciate a approval of that nomination. Sure. Madam Mayor, I'll move to appoint Chantal D. Rose to the Downtown Development Authority for a term to expire September 1, 2022. Support. We would support. And she would also like to be appointed to unification, and we have a vacancy. Unification, and we do have a vacancy. So um, her application is here, and it's on the back. It says beautification. So I'm wondering if we could also get a motion nope. at this time. Madam Mayor, we still need to dispose of the motion on the floor. I thought we did. No, we, we, we didn't. Call Please more. call. I was thinking that you could do both at the same time. Understood. 
we I could we couldn't could have if you hadn't taken the motion in a second all right okay <laughs> sorry Let's call the roll councilmember demonico yes councilmember owens yes councilmember lucido yes councilmember kleinfeld yes mayor pixley yes da then can we get a motion to appoint chantal also to beautification you have one opening currently do we need to know do we know the term or well to the vacant term that's okay um, I will make a motion to appoint Chantel Rose to the uh, Beautification Commission for the duration of the vacant term. Support. Who is support? support? Please call the roll. Cardi, you're going to need all the help you can get to clean up grass at Nate Mile. Councilmember <laughs> Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Lucido? <laughs> yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. All right, our next thing is a special event application. This is for the Memorial Day Parade. Do we have a motion, please? Madam Mayor, I just have one question. Um, the l last year, the city picked up the cost for um, city services. Um, this year, are the Knights proposing the, the same thing? that the city pick up the cost for city services? Um, I did speak with Mr. Blum earlier today about that. Mm -hmm. um, did we re need to rewrite that, Mr. Blum, the motion on this? All right, last year the city did not charge the uh, nights for the parade. It would just be a matter of making the motion to approve the uh, application without uh, charging them. In other words, when you make the recommended motion, don't read number one, just read yeah. number two. Madam Mayor, I motion to approve special event application for the Knights of Columbus Memorial Day Parade for Monday, May 27th, 2019 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. with the following condition, that all organization participation participating must sign hold harmless agreements with the city. Um, and I'm sorry, I have one other thing that we need to add to this and that we have the use of the pavilion in um, Kennedy Park for the picnic after the parade. Are you adding that to your motion? Yes. And, and I'll support. We would support. Please call the roll. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. All right, our next item is a bid award for the Meth Lab cleanup and demolition proposal at 22175 Hayes. I had a question how much if I may madam mayor um, do we have an average of how much demolitions typically cost when they're normal yeah they they run if depending on the asbestos removal portion anywhere from 10 to 15,000 uh, normally if there's uh, excessive asbestos removal um, it's more at the 15 level because of the environmental well the uh, house demo in this quote is over 25,000, could we utilize their services for the chemical lab pack and the decontamination and then just do a normal demolition? No, because of the way, and I asked that question of the companies, you know, um, our, our environmental companies and the, because of the way the fire occurred and the way this chemical proceeds through the house whether it's in a fire or not it permeates every aspect of the drywall and every aspect of the wood so you really need to actually have the whole thing to decontaminate from the fire and the lab itself you'd have to remove the whole house anyways so um in the there's just no way around doing a cleanup and then a demo that, that's why um, both our environmental companies recommended this company because they do both and they're certified uh, state in the state for doing that that kind of cleanup. Mr. Altimus, what did you mean in your memo then? You said the cost of the cleanup looks to be in line with costs that we have had with other demolitions in the city that didn't have this type well, of Well, if you take the chemical aspect out of it, um, and when I've talked to those folks about the demolition of the house itself, 
the the demolition cost of removing the house is pretty commensurate with what we've done before the problem is is the chemical aspect of it as soon as you throw the meth lab portion into that that's where it starts to really go up that's what mr kleinfeld's saying it says twenty five thousand. they break it down in in their cost analysis it's 25 for the demo seven a little over seven for the the rest if I could council member uh, normally you would see a demolition cost that's broken down with demolition and asbestos and in this case you don't have that delineation because the asbestos that's in the house is assumed uh, we have this third part here about the chemicals as well that's already in the structure so you've really got three components per se in that 25 then you've got the chemical lab pack which is an additional service followed by decontamination which is an additional service so this is really a uh, I guess you can call it a five-step demo because of the uh, uh, nature of the uh, chemicals that were inside the house and the unknown nature of the asbestos which the uh, demolition company has to assume is present because it cannot be tested or removed so this will have to go to a special uh, disposal facility dump uh, unlike a normal demolition I, I can tell you that I have had situations not quite this extreme in my other community and I'm not surprised by that twenty five thousand dollar number I actually think that that's fairly good. Okay. I'm not right. sure I agree with the analysis, but I think we need to move forward. So this charge still goes to the owner of the property, correct? No. Well, We're eventually I think it's going to end up on us anyways because it's going to end up on the tax reversion list. So that's why we're moving forward on it. It's, it's time to get it cleaned up and get it out of there. If it falls on the tax reversion list, it is what it is. The, pre the property presently is up for tax foreclosure, so we're looking at owning a $32,000 lot in a couple of months. Right now, I think it's more of a safety aspect. we got to get it out of there. Any other questions? No. Uh, Madam Mayor, I will make a motion to waive the city's bidding requirements and um, approve uh, the demolition of 22175 Hayes uh, with ERG Environmental Services in an amount not to exceed $32,878. Support. We would support. Please call the roll. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Our next item, item G, is a bid award for the step van for the Department of Public Works. We have a motion, please. Madam Mayor, I motion for the City of East Point, or the City of East Point <coughs> Council approve quote number J33226 from VersaLift Midwest out of Shelby Township, Michigan in the amount of $185,869 for the purchase of a step van. Support. Who does support? Can we, can we so, understand a little more? Yeah, oh, sorry. I, I had a question, because this obviously wasn't in our budget at all. Uh, actually, it won't be received until next fiscal year. There, we've got a seven or eight month wait, so this is in the budget proposal that council will be receiving. Uh, it's a necessary piece of equipment. We actually had water main breaks during the cold weather and the workers had no heat. Uh, the cost of repairs, you can call it the Frankenstein method, would be higher than the cost of purchasing a new vehicle. So this is a desperately, if, if the city wishes to continue repairing water mains on its own, uh, then we need this vehicle. What's an addition to the vehicle? Because I think I, I mean, because the, the quote's not very, well, quote's not broken down at all. And it looks like the same vehicle without, obviously we're adding a lot of stuff onto it, is like $72,000. So is the equipment it's, we're adding, it's a hundred ten grand. It's the equipment. It's specialized equipment that's used out in the field. Um, there's a list that's one, two, almost five pages long that identifies everything that's uh, necessary. Uh, it's a standard it's vehicle for this type of uh, particular use. Well, I guess I have the same questions as Cardi because if a lot of it is equipment like tools and so forth, can they just not? transfer those same things as an example a first aid kit 
from one place to another? No, it's all part of the package um, in there. Yeah, when you look at when they talk about equipment, they're talking about generators, pumps, and the like that is also included as all part of uh, built into the the unit itself. So it's a it comes as a complete package deal for the chassis, the back end, and all the equipment that comes in, including the shelving units, and the seats and everything else that the guys can actually design. Um, um, how they want it and where they want it um, for all their tools. The, the individual tools themselves, they'll transfer from the old rig over to the new rig. I guess when I see something and it says Sherwin-Williams white, that to me is just a can of paint. And I, I think that's just a description. It, it just, it can come in actually any color you want it. They can, pick blue if they wish but uh, um, I think I, that's just a description of I what know, the I, is. I just know that when you're buying it from a vendor they're going to charge you thirty dollars for a gallon instead of ten dollars uh, well, that, that's actually the color of the vehicle yeah your honor it will be a white vehicle it's like buying a white car it says paint and decal options included. included right so that's the color of the vehicle that we're going to paint the front bumper black. That's they can, standard. They actually the can pick whichever colors black. they want. <laughs> they just built it in. I actually say, I mean, there's other things maybe that I know. would be, they'd be charging more than getting it ourselves. I understand what you're saying, Madam. And front end alignment. Why wouldn't front end alignment already come with the vehicle? All right. So we have a motion and support? We do. Call the roll, please. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Item H is the bid award for the 2019 sidewalk replacement program. We have a motion, please. Um, I'm willing to make a motion, but I did want to just ask one thing. By approving the unit price rather than awarding the whole thing, uh, Mr. Spoda, I understood the desire to, that they can continue working. However, I'm just concerned that if we don't award it as a project, then they're not required to come out and do the work. Because I think a part of the problem we've had with sidewalk replacement companies is keeping on top of them um, to perform, uh, complete the work. Right, that uh, concern is being addressed in the contract that the company will be required to sign. Uh, so uh, what council is approving is the price that the company will be charging us. Administration is responsible for ensuring that the company performs the work when it's supposed to be performed so we don't have a repeat of the issues that we had in a previous year. So we're fully aware of that uh, concern, and it will be addressed <coughs> in the contract with uh, performance goals and objectives. Okay. Well, then <coughs> we'll make a motion um, to approve the unit price bids for the 2019 sidewalk replacement program to uh, Luigi uh, Ferdinandi. <laughs> Ferdinandi and Son Cement Company of Roseville, Michigan. Support. Move to support. Please call the roll. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Lucido? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. The next item is the bid award for the 2019 Concrete Pavement Repair Program. Do you have a motion, please? Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the unit price bids for the 2019 Concrete uh, Pavement Repair Program to Italia Construction of Washington, Michigan, in an amount not to exceed one million three hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars. Support. Move to support. Exactly where, where, and what is this? Why is this different? Where are they going to repair? Okay. The, the this is these are the roads. Uh, so 
Areas 1, 2, and 3 are essentially the southern end of East Point from Topher to the southern borders, uh, from the western city limits all the way to the eastern city limits. Uh, area 3 also tends to go a little bit north of Topher on the east side of Kelly. However, I'm not sure exactly how bad those roads are, so whether the whole area 3 will be done or just a portion, most likely south of Topher, but they'll start on the west end and move their way east from area one to area two and to area three. So, so many of our streets lose their pays rating because there's a pipe or something broken underneath it. What if they go in and take that cement off and discover there's a service line or something that's broke? Uh, then that will be addressed with the uh, city at that time. We do have a contingency in the contract and if it's something that the contractor can repair they will repair if it's something that the contract cannot repair they will simply advise the city most likely move on for the city to address the situation then come back if necessary to complete those repairs uh, however before the contractor goes out the roads will be inspected and marked so at that time we anticipate being able to determine if there's any underlying issues that are associated with the damage Motion has been made and seconded. Please call the roll. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Item J is the approval of the contract for information technology services. And Madam Mayor, I was asked before the meeting to explain to Council what the criteria was uh, that was used by the evaluation staff to uh, determine the most qualified company. We had five categories with various uh, uh, points. The first one worth 10 points was information on the background of the firm. To, uh, the firm was asked to provide a brief introduction, address the size of the firm, the number of years in business, the availability of the firm to perform the tasks and services requested, and the history of the firm. Uh, they were required to include key contact information uh, identified and referred to the company background and negative history requirements that we had identified earlier in the document. The second criteria were 30 points was key personnel and qualifications. Uh, the bidder was to provide a brief, a respondent was to provide a brief resume for each of the key persons proposed to work on this project. The credentials of corporate executives or firm principals are not necessary or desired unless those individuals will play an active role in the proposed project. Any key subconsultants proposed should be identified and information on their respective role in the project also needed to be included. Criteria number three worth 10 points. So uh, number two, so was uh, the 30 folks that would, would be working. Okay, number three was worth 10 points, and that was for past experiences and references, and we had instructions as to how to provide client references. Uh, number four was worth 25 points. Uh, this was uh, the uh, respondent to demonstrate the understanding of the scope of work developed in the work plan. And in this section, they were requested to demonstrate their understanding of the tasks and services requested to provide their approach to accomplish the services described in the solicitation. In addition, they needed to demonstrate how assigned maintenance personnel will, will respond within the one hour time limit for responding to unscheduled or emergency work, to include a discussion how assigned staff will respond to after hours and emergency work, where the firm's equipment and vehicle storage yard is located, and to demonstrate the ability of assigned staff to adequately respond to emergency work. So that was worth 25 points. And then the final category was experience with software, also worth 25 points, where the uh, proposers were requested to identify the software listed in the description of the city system, which the staff that was going to be assigned had a working understanding and the number of years and locations the staff member has used the product. So the evaluation committee worked independently. We read about eight inches thick of various proposals and we scored uh, our, uh, the respondents individually based on these criteria and these conditions. Then the committee convened. Uh, we uh, discussed the matter and our tallies were calculated and at that point the most qualified firm was identified 
And as that being the most qualified firm during an IFQ, RFQ, then we enter into contract negotiations. If we are successful in contract negotiations, then that recommendation comes before city council. If we were unsuccessful in, uh, result, uh, in to agreeing to a contract, uh, then we would move on to the next qualified firm. So we were not looking for dollar value uh, in this bid. We were looking for qualifications. This is a... Uh, uh, method that is used to solicit uh, professional consultants uh, in various industries such as planning, engineering, uh, IT, and anything else where we're looking for someone for the type of services and their experience not necessarily getting the uh, cheapest because the cheapest may not always be the most qualified or the best. So I hope that answered the council's questions that were posed earlier. What was the difference in price from the first to the third? We don't know because no price was requested. Okay. Yeah, I think we should have just, we should be somewhere between just doing the qualifications and just asking for numbers because I do love that you're saying let's get a, the most qualified. We probably should be doing like best value, which I know we had that discussion when we had the million dollar, this was before you were the city manager, Mr. Boda, the million dollar project was an eight hundred dollar difference between the two bidders and I was you know like let's get a little more information it's eight hundred dollars on a million dollar bid if the eight hundred dollars more is a better firm obviously it's a no-brainer at that point for that kind of difference this I mean between what we were paying and what we're would now be paying is a lot someone could you know for seven points on your scale is like 50,000 less a year could be worth it and then also I I guess the I see like for the number five which I think is the most significant uh, of the questions one of the bidders two of the three you put zero out of 25 and one he put 24 out of 25 so I don't know how there's that big of a discrepancy for that last soft HQ yes that was an interesting discussion that we had during our uh <laughs> meeting and I'm not going to defend uh, how two of us read it one way and the other person read the other way <laughs> well and also one of these have has worked in the city so they're gonna be more familiar with our software than the other ones they did have a little bit of an advantage in that category also uh, I will say slight advantage actually uh, it was relatively competitive Actually, uh, one of these other firms was a prior su uh, supporter of IT services to the city as well. So they were also familiar with the city and the uh, systems. Who are you talking about? <clears throat> Kanaka Minolta? No, no, no. Uh, the one below uh, expert technology on the list. Okay. So do we have a motion or more questions? Um, I have one more. I think there was mention of credit given for the amount of money we spent with them so far. How much? would that be? I honestly don't recall. Uh, it is a credit, definitely. Because they're billing us by the hour now, and that's going to essentially be now flat rate for a year. So rate goes down. That was part of the contract negotiation, actually. All right. Um, so if we got a credit, it won't be the same amounts, right? No, it will be the same amounts because we've been, since January the 1st, we've been billed on an hourly basis and the city has paid X amount of dollars. And this contract is for a flat rate for the course of one year, billed monthly. So we are going to be credited as having already made monthly payments up to the point that our hourly rate meets those monthly uh, rates. So th in this way, we are not going back to January 1st and making a monthly payment for January 1st. They've been providing services. They recognize now that they're going to be the contractor, contractual vendor. So they're not going to be getting extra money out of us if we're going to have a contract that we agreed would be effective January 1st. Personally, I'd rather, I mean, because the contract that's put together now, I think, you know, these companies would understand what they need to do and could give a price though and uh, we could consider it with you know the numbers what what I could 
what I could do, Council Member, is provide you the documentation on the uh, concept of uh, RFQs versus RFPs. I think that may be helpful. Um, when I went to the manager's meeting, and I think Mr. Altimus was at the same conference, was that in Novi, I want to say, several years ago? Uh, this was uh, presented there. Um, are, they're not, are they in the audience right now? No, 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 they're not. Um, I'm talking about the concept of RFPs versus RFQs. No, I, I get what you're saying, but yeah. I was asking if the... Yeah, the, the current vendor and the proposed vendor is in the audience. Oh, they are? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, there they are. Okay. okay. <laughs> I had not met you before, so sorry. <laughs> okay. Um. So what, you want to go back out for a bit? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I think because... Well, now that he's here, he's going to hear my strategy. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> they um, don't have another price to go against, you know, right now. So they know they're the most qualified. That's all. I mean, you understand what I'm saying. So that's that's all. I think what's in here, other companies could bid on it. Know what they're bidding on. If I could sort of give you an example where this concept will not work. If we apply for a grant for road repairs through the state of Michigan and we are required to go out for bid, uh, we have to do an RFQ for the engineering services. We cannot ask for qualifications and price under state requirements. It has to be a flat request for qualifications and the same process is followed. You identify your most qualified company and you enter into negotiations. If you cannot come to an agreement, then you move down the list. You cannot, under those state guidelines for engineering services for uh, state paid road projects, ask for numbers at any time. So the concept is being carried over here to IT. Uh, So what you're saying is you can go um, out for qualifications and bid, price bidding at Correct. the same time. You only can do one at a time. Well, I mean, this is so. This is why I've asked for what companies turn in in the past because I'm sure most of them have a cover sheet, something. We never see this, and this is why I've asked for the documents people turn in. If there's some like environmental advantage, I you know I've read about how they can trap the carbon when doing concrete for roads. You know, if there's something like that and we pay a little bit more, I'd be for paying for something like that as opposed to paying less and it being more of an environmental, you know, hazard or whatever you want to call it. The, I think companies or bidders like to know what the rules of the game are. So if they know that it's a uh, dollar value, that's very clear. If they know it's RFQ, that's very clear. If it's a combination of both, I haven't seen that, so I don't know if we would have companies that would be willing to uh, participate because what are the rules of the game then? It's not qualifications, it's not dollar value, it's a combination of both, and how is that determined? Well, I, think, I think how we typically do it is a combination of both. If they have a cover letter and stuff like that, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, talk about these different five different items that you were, you know, people are going to have the background of their company, right, when they turn in documents, who the employees are, and maybe some references. and Right, and that's the evaluation that the uh, uh, tabulation committee did. We had three members on this one. There was another one that we had five members on. So uh, the administration does review all of that documentation, and we make our best recommendation, professional recommendation, to the legislative body based on that. So that's a state law, you can't go out for both, that's what you're saying? Uh, no, I'm saying if this was a transportation, state Michigan transportation funded road project, you cannot go out for both. You, it has to be an RFQ for the engineering services. You cannot ask for quotes. Oh, that's not engineering. And I know this isn't engineering, but this is the, the theory behind it. It's either one or the other. And the state of Michigan believes that qualifications is more important than dollar value. I see what you're saying, but since we're not talking about engineering, we're talking about this one at hand. Right. Maybe we go back out. 
I guess. I would recommend be. against it. Uh, number one, it would be extremely expensive to the city because we're already paying an hourly rate. Uh, number two, we're probably looking at a couple of months going out. Um, the longer we go without a contract, the more expensive it's going to be to the city. Well, I guess in the future, if it's not engineering, can we get both? Um, I think there's a lot of people in IT that would consider it engineering. Uh, well, engineering, well, he was talking about something else. There are engineers in the IT field. I mean, when you're designing systems, you, you need engineering. Yeah. So this is, in a way, engineering in some extent, especially considering some of the tasks that we have identified in our needs analysis uh, in terms of uh, reviewing the system and potentially redesigning it to make it work better. We seem to have a... Uh, I don't want to call Frankenstein again, but we have, uh, if you've, we actually provided pictures of some of the uh, uh, challenges, let's just say, to, so the bidders know what they're getting involved in. Well, I guess I'd have a couple questions that, I mean, if I would have seen this beforehand, uh, would have liked to talk about, but like the first thing, I guess, you know, I see a handful I kind of like marked off like six different things essentially they're responsible for and everything kind of is around that like hardware and software maintenance is one but then another the city's website says a contractor shall update the city's website when needed I think that they should not be updating the city's website all the different departments should be updating their parts of the website and things like that we shouldn't be paying an IT professional to Post I, on the website. Right. I know I don't have the knowledge or experience in how to post to a website. I'm not sure how many department heads do. Our police department is very good at posting on Facebook. They're so <laughs> I uh, <laughs> <laughs> So I think, I mean, most systems is just like Facebook. You just put a bunch of text in, bold it, and it's on the website. I don't think we should be paying but an IT professional to do all that. I don't know what that meant. I mean, it's just one sentence in here. Right. So. That's not a major component of the uh, it was project. More, more for just uh, having the capabilities of doing something in an emergency situation of getting, you know, snow emergencies out there or post that kind of stuff. We don't want these folks, we want these folks to build our infrastructure. We don't want them doing websites. If we need a website design, we'll design a website person yeah, just, to do that. We don't update but, it much, so that's what it, why I thought. No, it, it needs to be overhauled and the last time we overhauled we didn't get what we should have got yeah yeah that was that done without us knowing and nobody so. in this room had anything to do with that so oh. that's as nice as i can put it yeah and i will say that one of the budget requests is a redesign of the city's website so that observation has been made and heard we seem to do that every three or four years yeah, anyway so all right, so any more questions? We got a motion. Somebody want to make a motion? Unless there's some questions for the vendor, since they are here, if there's some concerns. Why don't they introduce themselves at least? <laughs> you just state your name and. Mayor, Council. <clears throat> My name is Tyler Berta, Vice President of Expert Technology Services, current vendor, and happy to answer any questions you may have about what we would be providing for the, uh, the contract you have there. I'm just going to ask one. How large is your company? Our company currently, we have eight employees. Okay. That's the only question I have. <laughs> I mean, I Probably so would you like to make a, a bunch, motion? But and do you have more yeah. questions? <laughs> no, I, I, I guess I was expecting a little longer intro, that's all. But <laughs> let me, I was going to say, let me jump forward and answer some of the questions that I think you have from the contract. Okay. You're looking at the, <clears throat> excuse me, the number that is there. Obviously, you don't have any other numbers to compare that to. Yeah. Uh, from this process, going through it multiple times in the past year with a lot of different cities, um, that number will be competitive. I can guarantee you, you will get a lower number, um, but I know that the vendors that are that lower number are numbers five and six on your assessment list there. 
we do know the city's infrastructure. We specialize in cities and public safety. Uh, we do 911 service for most of the state of Michigan and, nine, and uh, Ohio. Um, we do a lot of BSNA work, anything that would be municipal based. Um, our technicians live locally. We're a small business. We're not a giant corporation where you're gonna call and have to press five, six, seven, and eight to talk to somebody. When you call, you get service right away. You will also have a staff person here full time, which is important. Um, I don't know what the other um, respondents may be said about having someone full time, but you're also not getting a tier one help desk technician here. You're getting a full IT director. Um, and on top of that, you get the support of all of our engineering staff and 24 hour support staff. So um, to look at it that way, excuse me, you're not just getting, you know, IT services. You're getting the whole thing. You get 24 hour support. You get dedicated support from our company, not just uh, one IT person on staff to change out desktops and things like that. So we do, like we talked about, engineering design and build out. So we will do all of those things in that price flat rate. So you're not going to get bombarded with, oh, we have to update a large part of the network in the city, and that's going to be a thirty or forty thousand dollar project. That's stuff that we offer. So that is included in your price. Do you have a couple big projects in mind first after? And, and if I can answer that question, under the contract, they have sixty days from the date of signing to propose a capital improvement plan. So that is their, one of their first priorities is to propose that CIP. And I can tell you that I already know that we're looking at desktop replacement because our current operating system will not be supported in January, I want to say. So new computers are part of that plan for desktop support. Oh, so even all the computers are on what, Win X, no. Windows, uh, Anything well, Windows, Windows 7. Anything Windows 7 will be upgraded to Windows 10, and we'll, okay. we'll address those case by case if it's a replacement or an upgrade. And like the email server, that's that's out in January 2. Exchange, we're on Exchange 2010. That is also at the top of the list. Um, exchange, uh, email exchange, backups, and the city network are basically the three top things to make sure that you've got redundancy, a good working email system, and a reliable network that all that stuff can operate on. Because right now, um, it actually is a nice design and it just wasn't maintained very well. So unfortunately, um, you know, something that's really nice that you paid a lot of money for uh, is not, uh, not operating at its optimal value. And you know that we, so we have East Point, MI.gov. Be nice to see um, things move to that. And uh, yeah, and I wasn't 100% sure at first, but I know we could do, you, we have eastpointcity.org. We could have both. So mine, C to Monaco at eastpointcity.org and eastpointmi.gov. Going to the same account, you can have two separate domains. Um, you know, if, if anyone's interested, email yourself at googlemail.com instead of gmail.com. Come, it'll still come to you. Um, but that, and then if we're updating the website, be good to see everything on .gov. So it's more respected and we don't have a couple we got a you know city of east point dot net for the site in east point city did we ever get the dot gov bet yes we, yeah, we got that all set goes to our we've just been so are we paying, to what is it 400 right a year for that uh yeah i think it was that i think that's what it was uh, our discussions tyler and i's discussions have been mostly infrastructure i'm more worried about getting our imp getting our infrastructure um, set the way they feel it needs to be, and then we'll start to migrate, you know, things over. Okay. Thanks for coming out. Absolutely. Thank you, and thank you for consideration. So are you ready to make a motion? Yeah, Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion uh, that we approve the contract for information technology services with expert technology services as presented. Or <clears throat> Please call the roll. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Lucido? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Item K is the introduction in the first reading of the ordinance number blank. Uh, that will be 1165, I want to say, because I think we just voted on 1164. To amend Chapter 30 related to peddlers, solicitors, and handbill distributors. Article three, charitable solicitations. Do we have a motion, please? Sure, Madam Mayor, I'll motion to uh, introduce and give first reading to ordinance number 1165, we said, right? Which would amend chapter 30, 
peddler solicitors and handbill distributors, Article 3, uh, charitable solicitations and schedule the ordinance for second reading consideration for adoption at City Council's April 2, 2019 regular meeting. Support. 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 Please call the roll. Council Member Domenico? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Item L is the adoption of resolution for the investment portfolio policy. Mr. Blum, did you want to speak to this? Um, yeah, the last time this uh, investment policy was uh, updated was 2010, um, and it did not include everything, and I don't know if it's been an amendment. I don't think so. I think the amendment happened before we adopted it. It just didn't get included. Um, it did not list all of the available investment options approved by the state under PA 20. Um, that came up when we tried to uh, do some investments with a company called Michigan Class, and they fell under what I would call um, H. If, if you go through the authorized investment section, <clears throat> excuse me, it goes A through J. They fall under the H category, and we did not have that in the last um, adoption, so we could not place any funds with them. Um, I guess the best way to describe it would be kind of like our MMRMA insurance, where it's a group of municipalities that pool their resources together to uh, cover the insurance. This is the same concept. We pool our investment money, and Michigan Class manages them and can get better investments than an individual city can do on their own. Um, the last figures I saw, they were paying or earning 2.38%. Uh, the current monies that we have um, with Robinson Capital, a little more conservative, uh, is getting about 1.4. And um, I didn't want to put any money, additional money with them when I was trying to get into this other organization. So if the council approves this update, I can then start the process of joining in with this Michigan class. Um, I don't know if anybody checked their website, but they are managing almost $1.9 billion of investments for cities around Michigan. Any questions? <coughs> All right. Please call the roll. I need motion. a motion. Yes, you need a motion. I'll uh, motion to adopt resolution number. Uh, I don't have numbers for these now, do we? Oh, sorry. To adopt the resolution which updates the uh, City of East Point investment and portfolio policy. Support. Move support. Please call the roll. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Our next item is related to the recommendation from the Parks Commission concerning the concession stand locker room building at Memorial Park. Parks Concession Commission is recommending that Council authorize the installation of a new roof, gutters, and repair of the concrete surrounding the building. And we'll discuss interior renovation at their April 10th meeting. And Mr. Sabota, it says we need to look at your memorandum. Anybody else, anyone not read his recommendation? All right, um, any discussion from council related to this? Um, well, I believe that, because I'm on the Parks Commission, um, we are concerned with, because these, these items, on the out, especially on the outside of the building, they're going to have to go out for bid, and we're not going to be able to do the whole project at one time anyways, because we're going to have to use different contracts, tra contractors for the roof, the gutters, and concrete, re concrete repair compared to what's going to be d being done on the inside. So we wanted to get ahead on this project um, as soon as possible, because we were really hoping to have it completed by the beginning of next season. And we know how long everything takes. So that's why we were hoping to get it out for bed so maybe this project could actually get started in May. Um, I, did, I do understand its concern because the roof, which Parks did um, recommend the roof on the pavilion at Memorial Park also be, placed, um, be replaced, and that is not part of this. But even, um, I think we might be able to still go out to bed and just add that if we wanted to add that. Um, pavilion roof at Memorial Park also ourselves. So I have a question for Mr. Ultimus. This has been on our capital improvement plans year in and year out for at least 35 years. 
Well, if you say so. I haven't been here that long. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but as long as you and I have been here, we We've have pushed and pushed to do something at Memorial Park. And Correct. this just can't wait anymore because every time you turn around, it gets worse and worse. Well, so didn't we have some approximation of cost for these items? Um, yes, we had uh, partners and architect evaluate it. Now, remember, I had a total project of renovating the whole building. Right. Um, which was somewhere around 230,000 to do the whole thing inside and out. So bits but, and pieces of it, we'd have to figure out which which parts. But, but we were talking at the time, because as I remember on our capital improvement plan, when Parks presented that, that we were going to do it in phases. Yeah, I had recommended phasing in the outside exterior plus the concession stand, because that just has to be done. And then if we so chose to move on to phase two, which was doing all the bathroom renovations and everything else on the inside. So if we went out for bids, how long do you think it would take? Could we do this successfully by the end of the summer? Are we talking about my phase one? Yes. With the roof and these things that are mentioned. Okay. It's tight. But we, we got could, football coming. I know. That's why I try to do, try to get this moving along in the fall, not. I know. If I'm preparing bids in the fall, I got a shot. I'm preparing bids now. If you give me authority today, tomorrow, starting, that, that design, I have to start design. So, but Parks and Rec, I mean, Parks um, in Architecture, they already looked at it, reviewed it, and essentially came up with some plans that were included in that capital improvement. Mike has some preliminary ideas of, of how we want to proceed um, with that and what to do. And obviously, they have multiple experiences in doing this kind of work um, for concession stands at football um, stadiums. So um, if you tell me to go ahead and do it, I'll do it. I'm, I'll, we can push as far as we can push it. The decision, of course, is up to council. I just made my professional recommendation based on potential funding sources and the thought that if everything's going to be done, it's cheaper if you do it with one general than if you piecemeal it. Well, we had we had talked about the money from the community center that came into the city. We, have, we haven't spent that money, correct? We right. have money budgeted for this building in our last budget. There is money budgeted to do this project. I thought we had yes, put it, it in there for the capital improvements. Yes, it is. We, we have we have four hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars in the capital improvement plan set aside for parks. Uh, take away whatever portion we just approved at a previous meeting for Roxana Park. That's already been committed. So let's call it four hundred thousand left. I believe that we had targeted two hundred and twenty thousand for, for this for this project. Yes. Yeah, and I thought it was two eleven, but right, two yeah. two hundred and some. And back to what Mr. Altima said, some of the things on that list that you have, have actually already been completed. There are some some work that has been done in those bathrooms. The stalls have been put up. There's partitioners. There's now there's sinks in there that are working and operating. Um, there was just a couple of things I know, like the Parks Commission wanted to add a drinking fountain that was not on that list. Um, we thought that was important to have a drinking fountain there. Also, they um, wanted to recommend putting bathrooms in the locker rooms. Just a small bat, you know, stall and. Uh, in each one but other than that like I said yeah I, I think we need to get moving on this as soon as possible well so. and and then the other thing is we rent out the pavilions there and the only restroom is in this building correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this has got to be fixed we shouldn't have to be taking porta potties over there all the time when we have restrooms that are available so the bathrooms are in complete working order they they everything has pretty much been done in the bathrooms i, I think nice. the recommendation that we made to do this in phases is appropriate um, you got to get the outside fix first you got to get that concession stand where it meets health health standards and i think from there you can decide what you want to do on the inside um, uh, whether you're fully renovating you know restrooms or just you know accommodating what's there there are some opportunities on that building it is huge um, that you could take on the whole south end of that building and basically take out some walls and open it up as a storage facility with garage doors so there's a whole lot of opportunity with that building um, once you get the envelope sealed and that has to be done. The, the roof has to be done. The gutters have to be done. Windows need to be looked at. And obviously, that concession stand. 
Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Ms. Council, Lucido, you're uh, what's your? Yeah, and I and I Mr. and I do think that when because we're going to do the roof on this building, City Council should consider doing the pavilion roof only because that it does need to be done. So when when the motion's made, I think that's important. I, I think what we're looking for is perhaps um, um, a motion or a consensus of the opinion to ask Mr. Altimus to go forward and come back with plans. Um, from parks and parks and architecture plan and design and costs and figures so that we can put a package together and get something done. I well, think that we can move forward with his phase one already. I think parks, I mean, partners already kind of has an idea on that. We can move forward with phase one and start. Yeah, I don't think doing one. the outside is going to take a lot of energy to develop bids and specs and design on that. You're right. talking about a roof gutter. It is doors, what it is. Doors, concrete, you know, that kind of stuff. So, so do you want would to make you, a motion, somebody? Um, well, I just wanted to ask, would you intend for the uh, work in the concession area to also be uh, go out for bid? I would do it as the whole project, yeah. I have one general, have one, one project manager out there. You could do both at the same time. The, a general can handle not only the roof gutters, but it can handle the concrete and also whatever needs to be done to uh, work on the concession stand on the inside. All right, um, I'd like to make a motion to direct administration to um, uh, prepare an RFP <coughs> to solicit bids to do work on the exterior concrete, the roof, the gutters, and the uh, concession area, and move forward with that as quickly as possible. What about the pavilion? And adding the oh, and including the roof for the pavilion. Support. I had a question because um, we didn't get to ask our uh, council questions. Um, with when you have sent something out, is it cheaper to send everything out at one time or send it out one at a time? No, the energy level for the architect, it's it's actually easier to do a, a full combined bid versus four separate ones. So if you're going to do it separated and you want to separate out your concrete versus your roofing and versus whatever we're going to do in the concession stand, that takes a little more energy. In this case, if we do it all in one project, you have one document, one submittal, and, and one basically design. Well, that's what I'm thinking because if you guys have been doing this for, like she said, 35 years, um, all that stuff should be already panned out what we need and what we shouldn't need and we just bid all that out while we and then come out with a uh, you know and then that person who does it comes out with what they're going to do with by phases i mean in all honesty what what michael just put in there is pretty much all i think the parks commission thinks that really needs to be done to that building with the exception of the other side really being cleaned out right now mm -hmm. i mean though because the bathrooms have already been been completed yeah, there's, there's some things that we looked at we thought could do better um, on the inside. Obviously, our, our um, task when we were asked to look at the building several years ago and recently was what can we do to make the building better overall? And at that time, that wasn't done. At that time, we had sinks hanging off the wall. We had very bad water pressure. We had all kinds of problems. Um, our whole thought process is going in on phase two, gutting it, putting in the new electrical, putting in new plumbing, things that haven't been modified over the years or repaired and putting it all new. So then you're not having to deal with it year after year. You're walking in with new electrical and everything right. and new gas. And at the same time, you got the opportunity at that point then to modify the inside as you need or how your needs dictate. That was what was behind the second phase on the inside, right. and that was just us well, getting also kind of a blank cabin, canvas of be, painting and saying, if you were to make this what you really think it should be, what will it take? And that was our outside number. We can always get phase two into the, um, the plan. The, what's the word I want? The, As an addendum? N no. Um, What's the word I want? The plan that we never approved. <coughs> master plan. It's for the recreation master plan um, so that we can get grants um, to cover phase two and or phase three. Because we haven't got a parks grant in at least 50 years, 50,000 years. 
then at that point you can take it it's a one little step at a time you've got the outside of the building you got your main concession area that is your biggest concern and the concrete that's where your concern is right now later on in a couple years if you want to tackle and take the south south end of that building gut it out and make it a storage facility with the, the 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 real bad aspect of those is also the doors on those things are all as we saw are in bad condition too right so and that's i'm hoping would be I think phase one is all the exterior exactly but i i think if it's going to be used we really should focus also because um, we have the money so we should be able to bring that refreshment stand up to the department of public health standards that was all in phase one plan yes okay so are we all focusing on phase one because if you're just yeah. talking about the roof and i think we need to move forward with phase one in my opinion and phase I mean, even one, if we even one. if we start phase two even if we approve phase two next month i think we need to at least get phase one approved right now well i'm trying to understand what is phase one as a total you see a roof now she's talking about the um it would be it'd be the roof the windows the gutters the doors um the concrete repair the roof on top of the pavilion and the um, concession stand okay and you were saying something about water fountains too so that's what i'm that saying that would be to probably put into phase two because we would have to have parks finish that recommendation when it comes to bathroom locker rooms in the storage area but just depending on where you want to put that drinking fountain we'll look at the plumbing on the inside if it's part of the concession stand um renovation at that point in time you would put those connections and get that ready to go okay. so we would look at that as a total i'm going to um amend my motion to include windows and doors because I don't think it did um, but I think with those additions it matches what we're discussing up here I think last time we went um, excuse me I think last time we went we all went to go see it I thought um, I think me and you were talking about that we want to see the pricing because we don't want to spend all this money on repairs and when we can get a whole new building for the same price Do you remember that conversation oh, sure. oh you're not going to get a whole new building for the same price not not that size building it's a pretty big pretty big building and structurally the building is very sound mm -hmm. so for two hundred thousand, i don't think we would be able to replace and, and that's that's the, the main point is the bones of the building are magnificent i mean there, there's nothing structurally wrong with the building mm -hmm. it just needs to be brought up to speed i think before i've uh, said that because of the price that we had back when we there was an estimate for the whole building it was like hundreds of thousands so this amount of work I'd assume yeah we'll it'll go out to bid and we'll get a much lower price than that and would make a lot more sense I think but yeah I know I, I know what you're yeah, I don't think we had bids before I think we just had estimates ideas. estimate yeah, from partners ideas, I think yeah. is what it was yeah, that's all we've been able to get as far that's as far as we've been able to get is just give you an estimate of what we think is the total project would cost all right, so you have a motion in support. Please call the roll. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Our next item is payroll and bills. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve payment of the bills in the amount of $2,148,623.08. Support. Move to support. Please call the roll. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Lucido? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Where's that? We'll move into Where's our that? second hearing in the public. Does anyone wish oh, to be heard? Your Honor, we missed then. Pardon? City manor, manager evaluation. Ma Actually, that'll be covered under closed session. Do you have a motion to do that? Yes, it's, it's already there. It's okay. there. Got it. Just making sure. All right, the second hearing in the public is open. Does anyone wish to be heard? There Sorry, you are. I thought I was recognized. <laughs> then we got sidetracked. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Pixley, Council. Thank you so much. As a member of the Parks Commission, we've really been putting a lot of energy into what needs to be done at the parks, and Memorial Field was one of our biggest concerns. It's the most used park when you look at other activities. And we all know that this has been a project that's been falling on the wayside for years. It's not gonna be fixed overnight, but tonight you're moving forward with this is giving all of us hope of seeing our park system become an A1 park system in the city again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Mr. Creech. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. I'm glad to see exactly what you've, you've come up with, too. The only questions I'm asking at, at the present time, because the money's been there for three years, and it wasn't used. You know, I mean, it was voted on before, and it sort of went sideways, backwards. Anyways, the money didn't get used. This time, I'm asking, is there enough money? And is Joe, exactly, this is what, what I don't understand, is now you're working on a concession stand. What are you going to do with the rest of the parks? The parks need work, too. The parks need just as much work as a concession stand does. It's nice to see right now that we're, we're going forward with the concession stand. What are we going to do with the fences? What are we going to do with the fields? What are we going to do especially with our football field? I know Joe, I've, I've talked with Joe before on this, and, and, I, and I've talked with Tony and the rest of the stuff on it. We have to keep, excuse me for saying this, I have to call them animals or Amazon off our football field. There's none of it left. Memorial Field is destroyed. There's no field left. If we can't, if we can't rebuild that field this year, it won't even be usable come this fall. You know, we, we've let things deteriorate so bad. Look at the fence around Memorial Field. Joe, I mean, is doing a lot of work over there right now at Kennedy. And, but there's just so much work to do in such a short time to do it. I don't understand this anymore. You know, we're, 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 we're not beating a dead horse. We're finally getting a horse and putting a cart with it. But we're not going in a direction, I mean, maybe that I, that I don't, you know, that I'm not seeing to where we're going to help the city in that much. Especially, like, you know, we're talking about, you know, now we, we've got a foundation, a good foundation, especially at Memorial Park. Be, be, you know what I'm talking about. But that's, that's all you've got. Now, what, what are you going to do with it? I mean, I'm looking, excuse me. Especially, Sarah, I'm glad, I'm glad I've been with you all the way through this, and I'm watching and see what direction you're going to go and where it's going to go, but you just can't work on just that, the concession. You've got to work on the parks. Excuse me for saying this. And especially, Joe, I mean, you know, Tony, the, the parks consideration, and, and I'm, I'm glad to see now that we do have, you know, a parks commission, but they're going to have to really get together in, in the... The, the, excuse me, saying this. You have 30 seconds. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The council itself is going to have to make these decisions. And this is what I said before, too. The Parks Commission can be your help. It's up to you people to make these decisions now to make them work. Please get back in there and really see the conditions of our park right now. Because I've been playing with this for a long time. I even asked the last time. The money was, excuse me, the money was there. The jobs didn't get done. Now we're coming back and falling on times again. Your time is up, sir. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Council. Anyone else, please? Good evening, um, Madam Mayor and City Council members. I just wanted to say thank you for reappointing me to the Zoning Boards of Appeal and for the opportunity to take the class for city planners. It's been interesting, and I'm sure that we're all going to benefit greatly from it. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Howard has asked the question, is it safe? Expedience asks, I'm sorry, Vanity asks, is it popular? Expedience asks, is it political? And Conscience asks, is it right? And there comes a time when, must, when one must take a position that is neither safe nor popular nor political, but she must do it because her conscience tells her it's right. And since last August, I have not seen council do anything other than a minute discussion in regards to the petting zoo and banning it and then failing to put it back on the agenda since the middle of January this year. 
and it's a failure to protect these animals from all the neglect that goes on in the petting zoos. And you cannot regulate stress or fear or agitation. And that is what these animals experience. And for the council to sit and do nothing and look the other way and turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to what is going on with the animals is shameful. It's treating the animals as though they are things and objects, and they are not things, and they are not objects. These are sentient beings that deserve protection from the cruelty of man. And there are far too many court cases that are ignored, and seldom do we see animal cruelty cases hit the news unless it's high profile, because in reality, what winds up happening is you have prosecutors that do not file charges for neglect or cruelty, or when it is a felony, it's pled down to a misdemeanor, and there's no jail time. There's probation, it may be one or two, courses of anger management, and that's supposed to correct it? Oh no, it doesn't correct it at all. It slaps a Band-Aid on a huge, epic problem that is growing out of control. And as I mentioned, yeah, Beto O'Rourke was in town, and I got his attention, and I also gathered media contacts from major networks. And so, I hope you will think twice about correcting this and putting it back on the agenda because if I need to go to the media and let them know how you have been aware of all this neglect and the transmission of zoonotic diseases that occurs with petting zoos, then I guess that's what I need to do because I, for one, will not look Your the other way. Up. I never take off a day off when fighting for the animals. Anyone else wish to be heard? Anyone? Seeing none, the second hearing of the public is closed. We'll move to mayor and council reports. We'll start with Mr. Kleinfeld. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm just going to say thank you to everyone who came out. It's not very often we have only standing room. And um, no one was even angry. Everyone was just happy to be here. <laughs> so just, Terrific Tuesday. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, first I'd like to thank everyone um, for coming out and I'd like to congratulate Love Life on their addition. It's, it's going to be really nice and I'm excited to see this pro um, progress being made over there for them. Um, also, I just want to let everyone know that petitions are avail available if you are interested in running for mayor or city council. Also, long Mondays, Mondays start April 1st. Our first one will be on the April 1st from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And also, yard waste pickup be begins April 1st. Um, we also, there is a tree and plant sale. Pre-orders are due April 4th, and you, if you are interested in ordering trees or plants, you go to greenmacomb.org to place that order. And other than that, we have our uh, clean up and eat up, as Mr. DeMonico uh, mentioned earlier, on April 13th at 9 a.m. We will be meeting at the parking lot behind the gas station at 8 Mile and Gratiot. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Mr. DeMonico. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'd also like to thank everyone for coming out and for those of you left, uh, especially Gary here with the, and uh, Sarah for your leadership on the Parks Commission. Thanks for pushing all that forward. It is nice to see all that going forward. I was glad to see some firefighters and um, Sarisa dispatchers out here and honoring them for the hard work that they do. Um, good to see some concrete awards, and I was—I still got to pick one of those up. Uh, I f figured they were made of concrete. I got to—I got to—they are. See how heavy they. Are. <laughs> um, Joseph, good to hear about the DPW director. I'm glad we can move forward on that. As he said, it's a terrific Tuesday. Lots of good news today, and hope everyone had a great St. Patrick's Day. And. Um, What's well, cool this month, uh, for reading month, I got to read to two of my, or I got to read in the classrooms of two of my past teachers in the East Point Community Schools, which I kept, I still kept calling it East Detroit Public Schools when I was there. S still not getting it straight. But uh, Mrs. Young and Mr. Gazelle, my fourth and fifth grade teachers, I was able to read to their classes at Bellevue. Um, so that, that was awesome. Read at Forest Park in Crescentwood too. And 
it was great to see the governor and the uh, lieutenant governor and Blue Bloomberg Philanthropies out here talking about the $10 million that Bloomberg is um, providing to the state of Michigan to help with the opioid crisis. Huge issue in every community in the state, including East Point. So it's great to see that we're continuing to work on that. And it was great to see that the governor and Michael Bloomberg picked uh, uh, picked East Point for the event. That was that was really nice. And look out for the fish fries in East Point, St. Peter's, St. Veronica's, uh, maybe some other churches. I don't know. And St. Barnabas. St. Barnabas. Um, and then also, yep, the Clean Up Eat Up, April 13th, as you said. And then also, if you're interested in adopting a flower bed, Beautification Commission does that also. And they'll do a kickoff at 11 a.m. at the Parks Building. It's on 10 Mile in the little DPW complex area. Come on out on April 6th at 11 a.m. then. And that's everything I have, Madam Mayor. Ms. Owens. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. Um, congratulations to the Sarisa getting their award, the mayor, and um, AEW for getting their award tonight. Um, the firefighters, I had to hug one of the firefighters because um, he's actually a neighbor of mine. He stays two houses away from me, so I know his, his wife and his uh, daughter uh, personally. So um, also to Love Life, they're an awesome church, awesome um, community church. They help us a lot in the community. Um, also, uh, I went to the Eight Mile Association, um, Homeowners Association with um, Sarah Lucido, and uh, we had a really good time there. Um, I would hope that uh, that organization would grow because some of those people have been there for a long time, so we hope that they would recruit new members. And the deputy fire chief was there to speak um, on a lot of things. He actually spoke about how the governor came down to East Point and how he had a him and his staff had a big part of bringing the, um, the governor at East Point, and that was really nice of him to do, they, uh, to highlight the city of East Point. And he always also talked about the new ideas that the department is implementing for our city, um, different programs for the kids, um, and different ideas to help um, us with, um, what's that called? I'm sorry, fire smoke detectors, that we have batteries that last for 10 years, and some other things that um, he'll be, he had a grant for that he talked about. So I really thank him for coming out. Um, I also had a monthly meetup that I do once a month at Coology, was a co-working space. Usually you see co-working spaces in downtown Detroit. So when I found one in East Point, right around the corner from me, I was very excited because a lot of uh, new things, everybody can't go, everybody doesn't go downtown Detroit all the time. So it's kind of cool to have some of those things in our community. And so I had my event there, and Director Roheep came down there and talked to a lot of residents about what's going on in the community and how they can assist. So I really appreciate him coming down, taking time out to talk to the um, residents. They had a whole bunch of questions for him, and he was willing to give his time to talk to them as well. And then we had a um, local restaurant called Von Tai that's located on 10 Mile that donated a whole bunch of food for the community. Um, I thought they were just going to bring out samples. They brought up three big tubs of orange, um, orange chicken, um, rice, ragoons, all type of food. So when they came out, all the residents was happy. Some residents ate and went to the restaurant and, and supported them. So I'm just glad that we have local businesses that are coming to East Point and, and not only investing, but um, helping the community and build up our community. I also had my 4-H program that I did yesterday at the middle school, and we had Cloverleaf donate some food to the kids as well. Again, we have restaurants and local businesses that are investing in what, um, you know, moving the community forward, you know, and I really appreciate Cloverleaf and Vontai do donating that food and um, taking time out to give back to the community. Um, also, uh, like Mr. DeMonico said, uh, make sure you go to the fish fry. Predominantly, I'm going to be uh, selective to go to St. Peter's because my kids go there. So um, they do it every Friday. It's $10 for adults, $5 for kids, all you can eat. And um, I just really love St. Peter's. They have a lot of different events in the community. It's, it's a community church just like Love Life. You can go there. They have adult volleyball on Fridays. They, um, they do a lot in the community. Mr. DeMonico has went there um, a couple times, even for my kids' events. So I appreciate that as well. So. Just, um, just we have we do a lot of stuff in East Point. You know, check the 
you know, um, website, East Point uh, Residence Groups has a lot of positive things sometimes when you look on there, um, depending on what the day you catch it. Um, tells you a lot of things that is going on in the community. If you go to my page or some of the council people's page, you can also see what's going on in the community. And please, let's continue to support our local businesses. Um, I went to one of the fish fries at St. Peter's, and I seen Mr. Han there. He owns the painting shop on Nine Mile, and he's been there over 30-something years. So if you go out and get paint or anything like that or supplies, let's support these businesses that have been investing in East Point for over 20, 30 years, and let's make them not leave because they, and he's also part of the Kiwanis Club that also gave food to um, a community event that I did for the kids in the community. So let's invest in our community businesses who invest in us. That's all, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, along with new businesses, um, Spock Burger opened down on Nine Mile Road, and uh, I know a lot of you have gone, and those burgers are the largest burgers you'll ever see in your life, and they taste really good. I mean, it's a really super good place. Um, I did try to go to St. Peter's last week. I drove around the parking lot for 45 minutes. And just as soon as I saw another car pull out, I was trying to get in, and I never made it in, and finally decided to go home and have chicken noodle soup out of the can. Um, um, Tiger Cats, I'm so glad that they were here tonight. Um, they're a really good group, a solid group that's been with us almost 60 years, and uh, I think it's time that we help them out. Mr. Creech, I know you think that this council just has lots of money and we're just ignoring the parks, but there are some times when we have to do streets, sewers, waters, and everything else, and as much as we all love our parks, there's only so much money and it's gotta be divvied out and go around. And we're all excited that this is the first time in a long time that we've had money to fix up our parks. So we're pretty excited about it and it will go forward. And yes, sir, I will make sure that you get another paddleboard court or shuffleboard court somewhere in this city. Because um, I know that you are just dying to do that. Um, I was really glad to see the final approval for Love Life Church. They've been working extremely hard raising the funds for it and you can see the congregation is extremely cohesive, works together, and they do so much for our community. So I was really glad um, to get that approval for their church because I think it's going to be a fantastic location. Um, PACE is this week on Thursday instead of today on Tuesday. It's going to be at the schoolhouse at 11 o'clock, and we're saying goodbye to, um, um, right. to Teresa West, which is a loss to our community even though she swears that she will be around so yesterday I was on the radio on WWJ radio and you can get the tape I got to speak for five minutes at one time and then 20 minutes later for another five minutes but man I was out there really plugging our public safety department um, they wanted to know about how did we ever get the governor to come to East Point, Michigan? Are we so bad with opioid? And I said, you know what? It was one of our firefighters that called the governor's office, knew that Mr. Blumberg was coming down with $10 million to give to the state, not to give to the city of Michigan. I mean, to the city of East Point. A lot of people think all that $10 million is coming to us. It's not. Um, we just want a part of it. And so the Fire department was really good in um, inviting the governor, and I think um, the fire department and police department did an extraordinary job of setting that all up, and it really worked just like clockwork. It was amazing, but it was very good. So the radio wanted to know about it, so I had to plug our fire department, I plugged the police department, I plugged the police chief, and um, then I talked about some of the other things that we were doing in the city and that we have a great group of people. The other thing they wanted to highlight was the fact that we appeared in some magazine about being the most affordable place, one of the most affordable places. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to know what the city was like and so forth. So it was really um, a good experience. I have never, I have been at radio interviews before, but I've never sat at the council with an anchor. And it was really fascinating how she had five different computers that she had to look at in a, in a schedule and she had to follow it precisely. 
and I was allowed five minutes. One of my minutes was taken away because they had a crash on 275 and they had to take a minute away from me so they could talk about that crash on 275. Interesting experience, if anybody ever has that opportunity, it's really good. And one of the things I did plug was MML um, and they wanted to know, I had said I was out of town last week, so they wanted to know what MML was and um, did we go to their recent convention or their legislative conference and what was discussed. So I got to plug MML as well. So I was very excited to be able to do that and to say that yes, our council was very involved in going up and reaching out and talking to legislators and bringing back good ideas back to our city. So it was a good, um, it was a good time. Interesting time though, I got to drive along eight mile road all the way rather than get stuck in 696 and I when I turned that corner at 8 Mile and Gratiot I said oh my gosh that beautification commission is going to have one really long job that is that I've never seen 8 Mile and Gratiot look so bad as it did so I'll add that to our list of yeah. places <laughs> you better put that one right at the top of your list I'm telling you so I would um, entertain a motion to go into closed session two reasons for two reasons well that's they have to include it in the motion sure madam mayor i'll motion to go into closed session for collective bargaining strategy pursuant to mcl 15.268 c and for city manager evaluation support move support please call the roll council member demonico yes council member lucido yes. council member owens yes. mayor pixley yes council member kleinfeld yes 